Christmas. Ilang tulog na lang at Pasko na naman. Guys, I, I just want to share to you this video from our church, Victory Fort, regarding cheerless traditions, celebrating Christ in time of crisis. I hope you get encouraged by watching this video and uh, you get to start also your own traditions. This will really help you na mas lalo niyong ma-appreciate yung kahalagahan at yung pinaka-importante why we celebrate Christmas. Thank you for watching. God bless us all. Enjoy! Merry Christmas, everybody! Merry Christmas! And uh, we titled this message, Merry Christmas, greeting all of you from Victory, Alabang, Alab uh, Fort, and Green Hills. Uh, just wanted to take these masks off so we can continue with... No, it's government regulations. Guys, we have to do the whole message <laughs> with masks. And social distancing. Go lang, go lang. <laughs> so stay away. Social distancing. But seriously, guys, great to be with you. Uh, this is Joey and Marie Bonifacio yes. in Singapore. Greeting you guys in Alabang at the Fort and Green Hills. And a uh, little bit of a picture of the family, an update, Marie. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know what? This was December two years ago, 2018. And we always thought this was the way our Decembers were going to be, together with family. You know, that was a given. But now, this is our reality. We have the family here. And then Manu is not yet there, the latest edition. This is the way we've been communicating to our youngest grandson, Manu. So it really is going to be a different Christmas of 2020. The goal of this message is to help you rediscover Christmas. And for many, many years, our Christmases are about money because this is the uh, season for bonuses and a lot of activities, a lot of parties, a lot of things we do. As you know, tayo mga Pilipino, September pa lang Pasko na. That's what we used to do, right? That was Christmas for us. 13-month uh, pay, di ba? Yung mga 14-month, kung pwede. Activities. What are the activities? Uh, activities, tuloy. <laughs> activities. Uh, we had like Christmas parties, office parties, family reunions, traveling here and there. And that. of course, the biggest one of them all, Marie knows this best. Hey. Sorry. Shopping. And so what things... Midnight madness, shop till you drop. Yeah. The malls are open till midnight. You know, that used to be how Christmas... Oh, December was before. The hope is that we will be able to not just rediscover Christmas, but really rediscover the reason for Christmas, which is Christ is the reason for Christmas. And hopefully for those of you who are new to this, you will discover Christ in 2020. I want to start off by reading out of Luke chapter 2 and the story of Christmas. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree in a census that should be taken of the entire Roman world. There's, uh, th those days, th there was an emperor that ruled the known world in Europe, and he sent out a decree which required, demanded that everybody go and be part of this census, which really speaks of great uncertainty. Uh, many times we think, ang bumakala natin, ang Pasko, puro celebration lang, puro hamon lang, puro queso de bola lang, puro turkey. Nagugutom naman ako not realizing that it's not that. It's, there's a lot of uncertainty in the real Christmas story. Now, further in verse 3, it says, and everyone went to their own town to register. They were required to do that. And in verse 4, it says, Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee and Judea, to Bethlehem, to the town of David, because he belonged to the house of David. When he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, was expecting a child. Now, notice not only was there great uncertainty, there was great danger. Imagine buntis. Yeah. Think about that. I mean, somebody who's pregnant, nine journeying, months. Almost nine months, almost. about to give birth, journeying through this treacherous country, great, in, great uncertainty, great danger. And finally, while they were there, they, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to the firstborn son. This is literally the, first, the day, the Christmas day. And he, she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest available, guest yes, room yeah. available for them. Great uncertainty, great danger, and finally great inconvenience. Wow. Pretty much looks like the way our Christmas this year will look like. And further in verse 8 it says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. So there were shepherds were out in the fields watching at night. Under great uncertainty, 
under great danger and at some level great inconvenience. In verse 9, it says, the angel of the Lord appeared to them. And Marie, do you want to continue here? Yeah, it says that an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. Can you imagine, Joey? This was a time when there was still no electricity. So when it was dark, it was really dark. So they weren't, weren't just in uh, political darkness or economic darkness, you know, or social or emotionally dark because they were under Roman rule. It was also physically dark. So when the angels appeared, there's another version of this in that verse, which says that they quaked, quake as in earthquake. They were really terrified because they're sleeping in the dark and all of a sudden they hear this loud thing and they see this bright light. So it's interesting that the first message of Christmas was in such a scenario. And the verse says, the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I will bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. So the first message is, don't, don't be, be afraid. afraid. And how interesting that that would be the message even for now, right? I mean, it's 2020, and that's a message. Don't be afraid. Of what? We're thinking, what are we normally afraid of? We're normally afraid of the unknown. What's going to happen next? How's our 2021 going to look like? When is this pandemic going to end, right? We have uncertainty the same way as the people before faced uncertainty. We're also facing uncertainty just like that first Christmas. There's uncertainty of jobs, when and where are we going to travel. Even us, are, we're uncertain. We don't even know if we're going to yep. be back with family for Christmas or not. It's uncertain. So even danger, right? Uh, because we go out, we're exposed, we meet people, we buy groceries. Who ever thought that an act of buying groceries could even be dangerous? Yep. Right? And then there's also... Okay lang yan. Yes, ma'am. Sabi mo, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Get mo? Sige. Happy wife, happy life. Happy wife, happy life. Happy wife, happy life. Okay, and there's also the inconvenience, the inability to travel, the social distancing, right? Lagi ko sinasabi sa ako, oh, excuse me, social distancing. Okay, papayag, mga lalaki. Okay, papayag. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, it's inconvenient for those uh, kids who are learning out there. You've been studying in a totally different way. It's been inconvenient for, for many of us. It's yeah. not just the unknown that uh, we need to not be afraid of. Uh, the uncertainties, the inconveniences, and the great dangers. Uh, when there is a time like this, we need to move in faith. At the beginning of the year, during the prayer and fasting, the Lord dropped a message to me that the year was going to be fra- faced with uh, great uncertainty, yes, but with the greatest obstacles come the greatest opportunities. I actually, at the beginning of COVID, preached a series of messages on the greatest opportunity. You may recall that at the beginning of the year, there was COVID, there was a, there was an, a, a volcanic eruption in oh, yeah. Taal, yeah. there was, a, there was a, a tornado in Nashville, there was uh, fires in Australia, mm. there was, it was endless. It was Bali, then there was Lebanon, there was, it was endless. But in the midst of all of that, we need to understand that we should not be afraid of the unknown, but we are to always move in faith, believing that regardless of what's happening, God is with us, God is for us, God is able, well able to protect us, to make sure that our basis of certainty is not the things around us, but Him. And thirdly, to break the mold. Okay, what does it mean to break the mold? Uh, There's a definition here, and this is what it says. Breaking the mold is to put an end to a restrictive pattern of events or behavior by doing things in a markedly different way. Imagine you're going to do things in a markedly different way. And it reminds me of these guys in, the, in Scripture. You know, this story is so familiar with all of us, right? It's about those four men who had a friend who was a paralytic, and they were so limited, they couldn't bring Jesus in the normal way, uh, bring Jesus, bring the paraplegic in the normal way, so they brought him through the roof. So they broke their mindset, the mindset that said there's only one way to do life. There's only one way to connect people to God. This is the only way. Instead, they became roof breakers. And I have a good message about that roof breaker. Yes, you you do. Absolutely. Okay. So I'm so proud of you, actually. Victory Alabang. 
Fort, Green Hills, I'm proud of you. You know why? Because you have become roof breakers without knowing it. You have learned how to innovate. Right? Look at this. We're doing a Christmas traditions via Zoom. Before we would be face-to-face, -face, before we'd only be one church, but now we're all churches working together. That's teamwork, and I'm so proud of you for innovating, for learning how to do online communications, online classes. I'm proud of you. I thank you for being agile. You know, agility is such a buzzword in the business community, right? Agile, learn to pivot and all. I believe that Christians should be the most agile. Remember what Jesus said. He said, I can do all things. You can do all things because Christ strengthens you. He didn't say do all things because only when it's not COVID, right? So perspective is very important these days. When you're in a Chris, in spending Christmas, and I don't know how your situation is going to be, whether you're going to be by yourself, whether you're going to be apart, from family or friends, we don't know. But I pray that you'll have the perspective that as long as you have Christ, you'll still have Christmas. Christ is not quarantined by the pandemic. Yep. He's allowed to travel. The Holy <laughs> Spirit doesn't need an airplane or immigration to tell him where to go, right? So church, even as you've learned to innovate and be agile and have the right perspective during COVID, I pray that you learn to innovate your Christmas. Maybe the spread won't be as big. Maybe uh, things are more limited. God's going to give you wisdom how this Christmas can turn out still really special and very meaningful. Continue to the verse in verse 10 of chapter 2 of Luke. The angel said to them, do not be afraid. And he says, I bring good news. Right? And that's the second thing I want to talk about. Is the, I bring good news. What does that really mean? Now, the fact of the matter is good news can look like bad news. That's right. That's really ironic, right, that good news can look like bad news. But let's go back to the first Christmas and how it began. Let's start with Mary. Okay, you have this young teenage girl. She's following Jesus, right? She's yep. following Jesus. Well, she didn't know Jesus, but she was following the word of God, right? And she's a teenager, and she's a virgin, and she's set to be married. So she had a schedule for her life. But then God comes in with news through an angel and says, you know, you're going to have a baby, he, he kind of fast-forward her track and mix the, the sequence, right? How can that news be good news? And that didn't just happen to Mary. That also happened to Joseph. Imagine you're this young teenager, or I maybe he was older, happened. right? He's Joseph older. was yes, older. Yeah. But he kept himself pure and holy all this time. He's a virgin, right? And he's going to get married. And all of a sudden, he gets this message that, you know, this wife that you're going to have, your fiancé, is pregnant with child, and the child isn't yours. It was put there by the Holy Spirit. I mean, that news is pretty wild. It's pretty crazy, right? So how can that kind of news be good news? Right? He's a guy is waiting for his wedding night, and he has to wait nine months. <laughs> this is the reality of the first yep. Christmas. And think about the journey of this family. They think, okay, well, we're going to trust God. You know, God is the one that put this in, if these events in motion. Surely, the birth of this child is going to be such a blessed event. We don't have to worry about the timing of this birth. But think of the timing of this. It, she's going to give birth at the time of where the village is going to be so busy. They're going to have to travel. Uh, in some cases, it said it was 90 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem, so it's like three to four days travel, and you're buntis, but you're pregnant, and you don't have a, a car. You know, sometimes we read it, we think, oh, maybe they took a grab. They didn't take a grab. They took a grab donkey, right? So you think of this. How can this good news that I personally heard from God be good news? And that might be your situation, right? You might have had a promise from the Lord. Maybe you're a girl who has heard a promise from the Lord. Maybe you're a man listening to this and say, God, how can all these restrictions be good news? Maybe you're a family going through this very tough journey. Always try to pray and say, Lord, help me find your news in this bad news. Because sometimes God's, bad, uh, God's good news can be hidden in what you think is bad news. Rediscovering Christmas begins with not being afraid of the unknown to be able to move in faith, and in some level, at some level, in some cases, be willing to break the mold. 
the key is to know that the angels came and the whole essence of Christmas is to bring you good news, but good news can look like bad news. More than that, it is still good news. Good news is good news. That's a good reminder. Good news is still good Regardless news. of what happens. What uh, is the good news? Well, the good news is that God loves you, regardless of where you are, and he came to save you. Now, uh, as a personal testimony, pastoring at this, this year has not been easy. At the beginning of the year, we had a death of a baby. Uh, in the middle of the year, we had a death of a father of one of our members. And uh, then we had a death of a, a member, right? So, and, and this is all, and then people get sick, people lose their jobs. There's always going to be challenges. And if we're looking for a pristine, uh, 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 disinfected moment in life, that's not reality. That's not even the Bible. The Bible is in the midst of whatever we're facing there is always good news, and good news will always be good news. You were about to say something? Yeah, you know, I just got reminded. Maybe later in the chat we can talk about it. But about those people who passed away, because I had an uncle and an aunt who passed away, and I'm sure many of you have personally experienced that among your family. But there was this verse in Micah, maybe in the chat we can talk about it, where it said that um, the Lord will lift me up. So it talks about the person who had fallen, and then the promise was, the Lord will lift me up. And that really brought me comfort that even for those of you who have loved ones who have passed away, loved ones who have fallen in a sense, but the promise there was, the Lord will lift them up. So good news is still good news. We have that Savior. Verse 10 continues where it says, I bring good news that will cause great joy for all the people. And that's the final point we want to make in bringing good news. Good news can look like bad news. Good news is still good news. And finally, good news brings great joy. Yes. You know, this really, we have a, I have a cuento. Because a few weeks ago, or last month, we had a friend, a pastor and his wife. We're not going to mention the name, but they're from another country. And the pastor uh, was incriminated in a criminal case, right? And he's totally innocent. So, we got news uh, maybe more than a month ago that he was being tried, and we were very confident. Even his, his lawyer and, and the, the church was very conf confident that he would not be put in jail because it was a totally no-base case. And then the next thing we knew, when the case was tried, they sent him and a friend immediately to jail. It was not the news we expected, and it was, quite, it was very unjust. So... The interesting thing was we prayed, and, and he would pray. He told us the story later when we were able to talk to him, and he said on the first day he prayed, and he said, Lord, maybe I'll be in jail for one day. If I'm going to be in jail for one day and you put me in this situation, I'm going to make the most of it. So he started praying in tongues. Then one day became two days, and then two days became three days. Three days became a week. And a week became two weeks. All this while his wife and kids were waiting at home. He had two sons, teenage sons, and a daughter that's around 10 years old. So how can news like this bring great joy? You know what happened when we were chatting with them on Zoom? I looked at him and I said, you look like nothing happened to you. You've been in jail for 30 days. He, he showed <laughs> us a picture of his jail. He didn't have a bed. He was sleeping on a cement slab. They were two of them. It's like he had a jailmate and him. They were sleeping on a cement slab. And the bathroom was just right there in the same cell. But when I, I look at his face, I said, uh, it doesn't look like you changed. And you know what he said? He said, how can I not, uh, how can I be depressed? I feel so refreshed. So I said, how can you be refreshed in jail? And this is what he said. He said, because God put me in this situation. And I didn't know how long I was going to be in here. I was going to reach as many people as I could. <laughs> so he, you know, there are times in the day that prison doors would be open and they could mingle with the other cellmates, a prison nurse. And you know what he did? He started to share the good news. Even if though he was in a bad situation, he started to share the good news. And then he told us he shared to eight, he shared to 12, around seven to eight, uh, received Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and four started speaking in tongues. This is in a non-Christian nation. So I thought, wow. I said, what did you say? I didn't care. I prayed in tongues aloud. I shared to as many. 
And he said, because God put me in this situation, I want to be found faithful. And you know what hit me, honey? I thought somebody in that prison must, God must love somebody in that prison so much that he would send an innocent guy to the prison. And it didn't matter how long it took him, 30 days away from his wife, 30 days maybe without aircon, right? Is there, there's no aircon in prison. But because he loved a certain person so much, he sent this pastor to go there. So much like the Christmas story, right? That God must have loved us, you and I, so much that one day, years ago, he sent his innocent son to come and pay the price for us. Luke chapter 2, verse 11 continues. Today in the town of David uh, has been born to you, or to, uh, today a savior. The, a, sa a savior has been born to you. He's the Messiah, the Lord. And this is, as I mentioned, the, the day that Jesus was born. And he is the Messiah, the Lord. There will be a sign to you, a sign to you. You'll find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And I want to uh, make this third point of there will be a sign for you. Point number one is don't be afraid. Point number two is I bring good news. And point number three is watch out for the signs of Christmas. And the first sign is found in verse 12. The sign will be a baby wrapped in cloths lying in a manger. Now, this is a manger. Yeah. I, you know what this reminded me of? It just shows that how humble God is, right? That it doesn't matter what your surroundings, God's presence can be there. It didn't matter if that pastor was in jail. It didn't ma matter that he was on a cement bed. God's presence was there. And maybe that could be your situation this December. Maybe you're facing a job loss, right? Can we go back to the other one? Maybe you're facing a job loss. Maybe you're facing a loss of a loved one. Maybe it looks bleak and barren. It doesn't mean to say, that God's presence isn't there. In that stable, in that bleak and barren, saliva-ridden... Uh, trough. Trough. Manger. That's where God had Jesus lay down. And I want you to realize that. Maybe you're just in a room, right? Sharing a bed space, or I don't know. But God's presence can be there. You know, it does, Christmas doesn't always have to be like this. You know, the thing that you see in magazines or uh, websites or on the internet. Like, it's great. I mean, look, there's ham, there's turkey, there's nice dishes, great decorations and all that. But what's the use of great decorations if God, if God isn't there, right? Let's remember, in the midst of all our celebration, let's remember the manger. That in the simplest of our environment, the presence of God can still be there. So as we try to summarize this message, don't be afraid. I bring good news. Watch out for the signs of Christmas. And the first sign is God's presence. Verse 13 says, suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with an angel praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The second sign is actually God's peace. If you want to know what Christmas looks like, it's looking for God's peace and knowing and remembering that God's peace is not a thing mm -hmm. to be sought, but literally a person. And that person is Jesus. He is the Prince of Peace. And because of him, we have forgiveness of sins. We have reconciliation and we have restoration of life. And if we will trust God in this Christmas season, we will find his glory in our lives. In verse 14, it says, glory to God in the highest heaven. Can and we go back to that other verse for a while? The that's the prince, same verse. The prince? Uh, yeah, you know why? Peace, restoration, forgiveness. I'm sure many of you have had uh, friction within family members. Joey and I have had friction. We did? Yeah, <laughs> because of him, not me. Understatement <laughs> of the day. <laughs> no, but you know what? That's why, that's why, why, <laughs> anyway, anyway, you know why? That's why Christmas is so meaningful this year because all of us need forgiveness. All of us needed the grace to be reconciled to each other, husband and wife, family members, relatives. I mean, you've had Zoom calls with family relatives that he's not seen in years. 
Imagine what a meaningful Christmas this is. Because we have forgiveness, we have reconciliation, and we have restoration. Amen. Verse 14 says, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. That's the final point. Watch out for the signs of Christmas. The presence of God is more important than any trimmings, That's Christmas right. tree that you can find. God's peace is more important than anything you can find. And more importantly, God's favor. And as we rediscover Christmas. Yeah, let's rediscover Christmas in 2020. What does that mean? Remember before we used to talk, maybe it's money, maybe it's about activities, about shopping. Let's change that scenario, okay? Not just for this year, but for next year. And let's rediscover Christ in 2020. Because, you know, Christ is our Messiah. He's the one that came at an uncertain, inconvenient, and dangerous time. And he's the one that wants to come into your home this Christmas. He's our Savior. So, for 2020, let's rediscover Christ in Christmas. God bless you guys. Looking forward to hanging out with you in our uh, live conversation. Yeah, and we're so proud of you. Thank you for innovating and connecting people to God despite the pandemic. We love you. God bless you. See you soon.